Hi guys, it's Deborah here and I'm back with another video. So today I'm going to be altering these cards. Now I was looking in the cupboard this morning for some playing cards because I knew I had some and I stumbled across these which are a travel games. I love that it says ages 5 to 105 so once you get to 105 you're not allowed to play it anymore. And what it is are these cards that I guess we bought for the kids in the car and so there were different things that you could do like look out and you have to try and spot something with those and then a lot of look out so it gives you ideas and how many points you get for each thing and also look out for the oh, hideaway hideaway um, yeah, so it tells you what to do there. Look out for the logo. I love my love. I married a marmoset, word power, coffee pot. So you can see, oh, there's even an introduction, how to play it. 21 different travel games, guaranteed to make the journey a whole lot more enjoyable and fun. But kids don't do this anymore, do they? And so I've pulled out some of these and I'm just going to start altering them. I'm probably going to do this in fast speed and do a voiceover afterwards because it is going to probably be a bit tedious as I go through. So I'm going to start by gessoing them. And I've got a, a normal size playing card here so you can see that they are actually quite a lot bigger than a normal size playing card. So I'm going to start by using some gesso primer and I've just got a little paintbrush and I'm going to some primer on top of each of the cards. I'm just doing a light wash, not super heavy. So I'm just going to go through and do that to every card. I've pulled out eight of them, so it sort of gives me a target to work on. I'm looking at creating some ephemera packs for my Etsy shop, so I figured eight was a good number to start with. After the gesso dried, I'm now going to stamp and I'm using some Distress Ink in frayed burlap and this stamp, which is a mesh sort of pattern stamp. It wouldn't really matter what sort of stamp you used. A script or other kind of background stamp would be fine. I just chose this one. It's one of my favourite stamps. The next step in the process is some old music sheet and I'm just going to tear it. This is pretty old, this um, music sheet that I have, so it tears very easily and I'm using a glue stick just to stick pieces of it down on top of the card. So what we're really doing here is just building up layers just to create some interest and some texture. It doesn't really matter you know what you use I've just chosen this but you could use old book pages or other things I just like the old music sheet and I've got a bit of it so it's about using up the supplies that I have I'm just using a glue stick I find that that sticks the best gets things uh, stuck down and because I've laid down the gesso on top of the card it's not shiny like it was before the gesso creates a surface for the glue to bond to. And I decided I wanted some more paper, so I've got this scrapbooking paper. I'm just tearing pieces of it off. It's an old map replicated on a scrapbook page. And I'm sticking that down, just overlapping it in places with the music page. I'm not going to ink the edges of it. You'll see that when I'm actually tearing it, I'm tearing it so that, oh, I missed one there. I'm tearing it so that the paper doesn't have a white edge. So you might think that that's a bit silly to tear that piece off and not use it, but it just saves a step of inking the edges because I've got this piece of paper that doesn't have a white edge anymore. And I'm getting too uh, cards done from each strip that I'm tearing so it's not too bad really
this last piece that I'm doing to get it out of the, the single page, I've actually had to ink the edges of that. And that's okay, I could have done it to all of them. I've just been a bit lazy, really. So that's all eight of those done. Now I'm going to add some washi tape. This washi tape has got like little tickets on it. And I'm just adding it vertically on the left hand side, just in a bit from the edge. Again, taking into account that you don't want everything going in the same direction and you don't probably want everything right to the edge of the paper. Just keeping in mind that, you know, it has to look visually pleasing. So I'm just whipping through this and getting all of those stuck down. Absolutely love washi tape. I think it's the best thing ever invented. It's so easy. Now I'm just going through and tearing off the bits now that the glue has dried a little so that it's not um, too far over the edge. I'm not being too careful. I do want a bit of randomness in it. So I'm just tearing some bits of that off. And now I'm going to take my ink again and my blending tool and just ink around the edges of all the cards. Then I think I'll add some butterflies to these. I don't think you can go wrong with butterflies. And this is a great book. It's got lots and lots of butterfly images. So I'm just seeing how big the butterflies are in comparison to the cards. So they look like some of these will fit on there. And I'm going to fussy cut around them. Just checking which side. This is the only problem with these books is that you have to make a decision which side of the page you want to use. And sometimes there's things on the other side and you want to use both pages, but you can't, so you just have to make a decision. So I'm just fussy cutting around the butterflies now, just leaving a, a tiny little gap on the edge, because that looks better when you do that, and then just checking that it's going to fit on the card. So I've got all my butterflies cut out and I'm going to ink up the edges of the butterflies just so they look a bit nicer once I stick them onto the card. So I'll do that for all eight. And then I decided to get out my go-to, which is my Tim Holtz paper dolls, and put those on because, you know, butterflies, wings, paper dolls, they just go together in my head. So I'm just checking the size of the doll to make sure that she's going to fit on the card and that looks pretty cool so now I'm going to get the glue and stick that down starting with the butterfly when I cut butterflies I cut the little feelers I don't know what they're called but those little feelers that come out of the top of the image I always just chop those off because I'm usually sticking something normally a paper doll on top of it so you don't see that anyway now this is quite a big butterfly so I'm going to have to find something that fits and the problem is that the biggest one of these might be too big for the card so I'm just hunting through to see and that lady there is going to be too small for that particular butterfly so I've decided to use her on a different card because she'll fit quite nicely on this card. so I've got her now I have to try and find something and I can't use any couples because I've only got one butterfly I you know could use couples I'm going to use this guy he's a bit taller than the card but this is quite a big butterfly that I've put on there so I think I'm just going to dangle his legs over the edge of the card and I think that's fine Maybe I should have thought of that before I cut out such a big butterfly to put onto the card. I'm just selecting some other dolls here. Some of them are sitting down, some of them are standing up. It doesn't really matter as long as they look good on the actual page or on the card with the butterfly behind them. I like this dude, he's cool. I like how he's sitting. So I'll get the rest of these done and come back. So now I'm finished and I have eight cards.
all decorated up and I think that they are really cool. So if you've enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. This is Deborah and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.